Welcome to this very, very important video where I will talk about how you can meet God. I will talk about how you can get a relationship with God. I will start with my own story, how I 5th of April 1995 experienced God. And then I will use these cards we have done to help you to understand the gospel, what Jesus did, so you can also experience God. First, I want to say that I grew up in a family in Denmark where I was baptized and confirmed in the Lutheran Church without knowing God. Like many other people out there, it was just religion, something we did because our parents wanted us to do it. I never opened the Bible, I never had like a relationship with God, but I believed there was a God. But when I was 16 years old, my mom got sick. And there I tried to pray to God from my whole heart. I prayed, 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 but I felt there was nothing. I felt there was only a wall between me and God. And that did that I got very disappointed and I threw God away. I threw faith away. And I was convinced there was no God because I have not experienced him. I tried, I prayed, nothing happened. So I was an atheist with faith that there was no God. But then a few years later, I, I start to think of life again. Why are we here? What happened when we die? Where do we come from? If I look at this set of cards here, there is a picture on the front page here. This picture is a proof that there was somebody behind a computer making this picture. This picture cannot come by itself. And I start to think of that. Yes, out of this picture, I just know there is a designer, but I don't know who the designer is. I don't know if the designer is a man or a woman. I did not see anyone standing with a brush and painting it or standing behind a computer and putting it up. I have not seen that, but I know that it happened. Why? Because I have the proof here. But if this have a designer and this cannot happen by itself, what about me? What about the body of us, our body? What about the human DNA? What about everything we see around us with the universe, with the world today? How can we believe that everything we see around us is just random, without any designer? It just came by accident. And, and the more I start to look into that, the more I got convinced that there must be something. <laughs> There must be a God. There must be something behind all of this. And I fall away as an atheist and start to believe in something. But I did not know what that was. So one night in desperation, I look up in the sky and say, come on God, if you are there, come and take me. I want to know you. But when I said that, I was thinking of UFOs will come and beam me up and fly away with me or big angels. Actually, I did not know what to believe. I did not believe in Jesus. I did not believe in the Bible. Why? Because I thought I had tried that. I did it. I did what the Lutheran Church told me to do, what religion told me to do. It didn't help me. It didn't make God real. So all of that I, I had thrown away. But I still believe there must be something. Short time later, I, I visited a friend who had his Bible laying on his bed. And when I saw that, I thought, come on, you're crazy. You cannot believe in the Bible. The Bible is a book for old people. But then he told me something interesting. He told me, Torben, I have met God. I said, no, no, no. You can believe, but you cannot meet. You can believe in God. Faith is like sitting in a church, believing in something you don't know if, if it's real or not. And that day you die, you will find out that you have been cheating. It was my definition of faith at that time. But he, he was changed. He talked about Jesus in a personal way. Something had happened in him. But I was convinced he was brainwashed, so I tried to make him normal again. But then I saw a program on TV with, where somebody got prayed for and a person experienced God. I saw a young girl where a tear run down her cheek. When I saw that, it did something in me. I'm like, this is real. Like, she has also experienced something. Here I am, I'm baptized in the Lutheran Church, I'm confirmed. I was an atheist a few years, but I, I've never experienced God, but can you experience God? 
And it just did something in me. And I was like, if you can take him and feel him, if you can experience him, I will have it. I want proof. I want to have him if he's real. And the day after, I went with my friend to church. And I came into a church, first time ever like that, where people were staying with their arms lifted and somebody was speaking in tongues. And I was thinking they were crazy, all of them. But at the same time, I saw something in their eyes. I saw life in their eyes. I saw they had something I did not have. I saw they talked about God in, in a personal way, a, a way I, I have never heard before, like they knew him. That day, that evening, 5th of April 1995, I gave my life to Jesus. I repented and God came. I stood with my eyes closed and the Holy Spirit came into my body and I fall to the floor. And it was like a light came into me and I got the most incredible experience through my whole body. And I knew this is God. This is God of the universe who's touched me right now. When I stood up after a few seconds, my life was changed and I could never come be the same again. My life was completely changed. Now I did not hope there was a God. I knew he was there. Why? I have experienced him. He have changed me. He changed me from inside and out. And from there, I started to live a different life. I could not live in sin as I did before. I start to change. The fear of hell, the fear of dying disappeared. I experienced a relationship with God as we read in the Bible. A few months later, I was to a Christian concert and I was standing worshiping God and there God spoke to me for the first time. I heard him say, Torben, the one who's standing behind you is going to be your wife someday. And I was like, what? And I turned around and like, oh, my wife, my wife is standing behind me. And I just knew it was going to be my wife. I smiled to her that evening. I did not talk with her, but I said to my friend on the way home, hey, I just met my wife. I don't know her name. I don't know how old she is. I don't know where she's from, but God has said that girl is one day going to be my wife. I came home and I said, God, thank you for the girl in the yellow dress. You had to put us together. And he did that. And today we have been married 23 years, had three kids and two grandkids. My life got changed. Jesus has changed my life. Like he has done with millions of millions of people all over the world. There is millions of people who have experienced God. But there is also many, many people who are still in religion, who have heard about Jesus, who have heard about God, who know about the Bible, but have never experienced him, don't know him. <laughs> And what I would like to do now, I would like to use some cards we have made. It's just simple cards with some pictures on, but it's very, very good to illustrate the gospel. And I would like to show you what the gospel is all about, to illustrate what it is Jesus did, so you know what you need to do to experience him. God, he was in the beginning, and God, he created heaven and earth. And read about that in the beginning of the Bible. And he created a garden, and in the garden he put the tree of life. And he put the tree of knowledge, good and evil. And he put many other trees. There in the garden he put man. And he put man in the garden to walk with him. And we read in the Bible how man have fellowship with God. How man walk with God. And everything was perfect. The world God created was a perfect world. There was no sickness, there was no death, there was no wars, there was no rape, there was not like we see in the news today. Everything was good. And man was supposed to eat of the tree of life and live forever. But man took of the wrong tree. They sinned against God and everything changed. Before man was open to God, but now they changed. They became dirty. <laughs> they changed. Before they had a heart, soft heart, but now they got a stony heart. And God then said, Oh, if man now eat of the tree of life and live forever, we will always have a problem with sin. And because God did not want man to live forever because of the hardness of heart, we were thrown out of the garden. And he set angels to keep them away from the garden, away from the tree of life. And now we had a world that was very different than the world God created it. 
in the world, people got kids and they started to kill each other, who got kids, who killed each other. And suddenly we had a world with a lot of evil. Just look at the news today. It don't become better and better, it becomes worse and worse. And this, I met people who said, oh, I cannot believe in a God when there's so much evil happening. But the Bible is telling that this is what will happen, because this is not how God created it to be. But he came with a solution, and that is Jesus Christ. But before we talk about Jesus, we need to look at man and where we are today. Because the problem with us is that we often compare ourselves with each other. And therefore we think we are good. We say, hey, I'm not so bad, look at him, look at her, look at them. And we compare ourselves with each other instead of compare ourselves with God. If you look at sin, the law said you will not murder. But Jesus said if you have hate in your heart, you are already a murderer. The law said you will not commit idolatry. But if you look with lust on somebody, you have already done it in your heart. So maybe you have not physically been out being sexual together with somebody before or out of marriage. But if you see it and look at porn on internet, it's like having a sexual relationship in your heart. And it's sin. And the Bible says, have you broken one of the law, you are guilty in them all. And we have to understand that we are living in a falling world where everyone has sinned and lost the glory of God. We are all divided from God because of our sin. And if you say you have not sinned, you make God a liar and the truth is not in you. Because we have all sinned. The solution, what is that? That is Jesus Christ. God, he could judge everyone and send everyone to hell and still be good and still be loving and still be righteous. Why? Because God is not the problem. We are, we have sinned. We have got a stony heart. But then God did something amazing. He gave his son Jesus Christ. Jesus came down here on earth and he walked here among us. But where we have lied, where we have stolen, where we have broken God's law, he kept it. He was without sin. When he was around 30 years old, he got baptized in water. When he came up again, the Holy Spirit came over him like a dove. And from that on, he walked around here, healing the sick, casting out demons, and telling people how they need to repent, turn away from their sins, and how they need to be born again out of water and spirit. And he was teaching about what it took to follow him as his disciples. So he was walking around here as the only man without sin. He got crucified on a cross and he got buried. If he had one time liked, like you and me, one time stolen, one time done what we have done, he would have been in that grave today. But because he was the only man without sin, he rose up again. And he conquered death. So we, through him, can experience forgiveness from our sins. So we, through him, can get a relationship with God. That what is dividing us from God, our sins, will be dealt with. So we, through Jesus, can walk with God again. After he was here, he went to heaven as king and have now sent his Holy Spirit down here on earth. What do we need to do now? The first thing we need to do is that we need to recognize that we have sinned against a holy, righteous God. Recognize that we have a stony heart, that, that our heart is rebellious against God. We need to turn away from our sins and put our faith in Jesus Christ. I remember many years ago, I stole a bicycle. I felt it was so bad, it was so bad, it was so bad, I should not do it, but I did it anyway. Next time I did it, I also felt bad, but I felt less bad. Next time I felt even less, and next time I almost didn't feel anything. What happened? My heart became harder and harder and harder. But when we repent, when we turn away from our sins, put our faith in Jesus, God is going to take out that stone heart and give us a heart of flesh. He's going to give us a new heart.
where the conscience is going to be sharp again. The first thing I remember I, I experienced was my words. Suddenly I, I remember how bad I was speaking, how I was cursing God through my words. And right away, because my heart changed, my words changed. Because my heart changed, my action changed. Not because people came and put a law for me, but because my heart changed. But that is not enough. The body is still dead. The Bible says the one who do sin become a slave to sin. It was like when I start smoking, I could control it in the beginning, but then it controlled me. Many people are addicted today to porn on the internet, to lying and other things. We are slaves to this world. When you get a new heart, you want to do what is right, but you cannot because the body is still in sin. So there you need to bury the old body, like we read in Romans chapter 6, where you die with Christ and rise up with Christ. There where sin have no dominion over you because you are not under the law but under grace. There where you can overcome sin in Jesus Christ. And it looked like this. Here we are with a new heart and then you die with Christ in baptism in water and then you rise up with Christ. You are now was clean. Like Adam and Eve was clean before sin came and changed everything. You are was clean. And that is really amazing. And babies cannot get baptized. You have to repent first before you can get baptized. And it was what was wrong with me. I have never heard of repentance. I just got water on the head when I was a baby in the Lutheran church. But that is not life changing. That is not baptism. But the real repentance, the real baptism, that is life changing. So now you are was clean. The old thing is dealt with. But this is not enough. Like the Holy Spirit came over Christ, the Holy Spirit needs to come over you. Where you are now filled with the Holy Spirit and you now have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you. And now it's you who are walking here on earth like Jesus was walking on earth. As his disciple, as his apprentice, learning to walk like Christ, learning to live a holy life to walk by the Holy Spirit, to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to do what Jesus did. And then other people repent, see their sins, turn away and get a new heart. Then they get baptized to Jesus Christ and then they rise up again. And then they also experience the Holy Spirit come over them and the kingdom of God is growing. One day God is going to come and judge the world. And those who live in sin is going to be thrown away and burned in fire. And then he's going to come down in the New Jerusalem. And there he will be. And there in the middle of the garden he will put the tree of life. And now everyone who are was clean, everyone who are born again, will be able to take out their hand, eat of the tree of life and live forever. And one more time, everything is going to be good perfect as it was in the beginning, exactly like God created it to be. So that is the gospel from the beginning to the end. How God created us with fellowship with him, but sin came and destroyed it all through Adam. And now because everyone has sinned, death has come to all men. And you know, 150,000 people die every day. One day, one day is your turn, is my turn to die. But the good news is that there's forgiveness in Jesus Christ. He came, he gave his life for us, so we can experience forgiveness. And it's not enough that you read about it, it's not enough that you hear about it, you need to experience it. You need to be born again. I don't know where you are in your life, maybe you are here, Maybe you are the one with the stone heart who are not born again, who are not baptized, who are still in your sins. You need to repent. You need to turn away from your sins to Jesus Christ and experience the new heart, experience the forgiveness. And it's your decision. 
And God is a holy and righteous God, and he is going to judge people for their sins. Maybe you are there. Maybe you have already turned away from your sins. And maybe God has given you a new heart, a new conscience. But you are still fighting with sin. You don't feel you are free. Why? Because you are never, after you repented, was the way the old man. You are no, not, not walking in the freedom God has for you. If you are here, then you need to get baptized with full immersion on the water to Jesus Christ. Or maybe you are baptized already and have got a new heart, but you have not got filled with the Holy Spirit. You have not got baptized with the Holy Spirit yet. And you don't walk the life we read about in the Bible, the life we read about in the early church, where people was led by the Holy Spirit, healing the sick, casting out demons, and was living this supernatural life in fellowship with God. Or maybe you have it all and are living as a disciple and you are growing as a disciple and every day you grow and you walk more and more like Jesus. I would recommend you to go in and see some of the movies we have. We had three movies. The last movie is called The Last Reformation, The Life. And there you see about this life we read about in the Bible, how we went around and preaching the gospel and healing the sick and casting out demons. You, you see in this movie how people repent, how they get born again by getting baptized in water and receiving the Holy Spirit. One of the things you see in the last five minutes in the life is the known singer uh, Lubega, who's known for the song Mambo Number no. 5. You see there how we did what we read in the Bible in Luke chapter 10. How we went in to find a person of peace. And how we in their house were sitting and eating and drinking what they were serving. Like Jesus said we should do. And how we were healing the sick and preaching the gospel. Lubeck and his family repented, got baptized in water and received the Holy Spirit and a total new life with Jesus. And you can also experience this new life. You can also go into our map, tlrmap.com. And there you can find people near you, you can contact, you can meet with, who can share a little more about the gospel, who can pray with you, who can baptize you in water and with the Holy Spirit. So it's up to you. Where do you want? Jesus has paid the price to forgive you, to make you a new person. And there is only forgiveness in Jesus Christ in the cross and what he did for us. And we are here to help you. So contact us, contact somebody near you, and make sure that you also experience this new amazing life with God. God bless you.